Welcome to the Reckon video demonstration of Practice Management version 10, New Features and Enhancements. We have over 230 new features and enhancements in this version, so the agenda today is not to replace the written release notes, rather to provide you with an additional video representation of the main new features and enhancements in Practice Management version 10. The development team have been very busy, so for a more complete listing, please review the release notes for this version, which are available within the application. By the end of this video, existing users of practice management will be familiar with the major new features designed to assist them with the day-to-day -day management of their client data. Let's get started. One of the most exciting new features is the ability to be able to send invoices or statements via email in a single batch. This functionality is quite complex and configuration is required. Your invoice and statement layouts will need to be converted to a new format and once a pre-implementation has been completed, a full user guide on this functionality will be made available. If your practice would like to implement this feature, then you will need to discuss your requirements with a consultant. Here is the new central console. This console has a new modern, fresh look and feel, and has some great new features. The first thing to notice is the new ribbon, which replaces the old menus and buttons. All of the previous functionality and actions can still be accessed via the ribbon, however the navigation is just a little different. Each of the buttons which have the little downward pointing arrow head indicates that there are further selections available when these buttons are clicked. These represent items from the menus in previous versions. Let's start with the Help button. This is where the Practice Management Online Help is available, the release notes for version 10, there are some keyboard shortcuts listed here, and you can also access the knowledge base. The action menu is now a button with the same selections available as were available from the action menu in previous versions. There is a new recent button. This will display a list of up to 10 clients whom you have accessed during the current console session and provides a quick method of navigating back to these records. The navigation pane on the left hand side has also changed a little. You can now pin this pane so that it is always displayed or have it unpinned so that it automatically minimises when you move away from it and maximises when you hover your mouse over the console tab. To re-pin it just click on the little pin icon. The usage of the bands in this navigation pane has also changed. In order to access a specific band You'll need to click on the arrow head, which will then expand the contents of this band in the pane. In the top right hand corner of the console there is a field labelled Client ID. This is for those users who remember their client's ID numbers and prefer to enter these numbers to access the client records instead of using the filter field to search by name. When the console opens the focus is automatically set to the filter field so you'll no longer have to click into this field first before typing the name of the client you wish to load. The F9 key will also move the focus from anywhere in the console back to the filter field. In the sort builder, for Australian clients we have added a new option to be able to filter by tax file number. When adding new client records, the mandatory fields have been changed to display in red so that it is very obvious which data is necessary to be entered before completing this wizard. The client attribute set functionality has been extended so that when altering the partner, manager, department or debtor fields currently assigned at a client level a new pop-up window will appear allowing users to also change the value for this client's open matters. The only exception to this is if the matters are currently involved in a fee or if the matters are part of a value billing contract. In this case the matters will not be able to be selected and the reason column will indicate why this is the case. So in this new pop-up window I can select these four matters but as you can see I cannot select this first matter as it is currently involved in a fee. Let's go ahead and change those. The documents area functionality has also been extended. If the document store is configured to file by sort name and the client's name has been changed to another name or if the folder name has been manually altered, 
then the console will now display a flashing warning signal and the background of the folder selection will change to an orange colour. Given the appropriate new Joe administration rights, users will be able to right click on the Manage Folder link and will see a new option to rename the Manage Folder path. A pop up window will then appear showing the new path that will be applied if the user selects to continue. Let's have a look at how that works. So if I go into my details area and I alter my client sort name and we might just take out the PTY. Commit that into the database. Do a refresh. And then let's have a look in our documents area. We can now see that the background of the context link area is now showing as orange. And the sort name has a little flashing icon next to it, although you won't see it flashing in this demonstration. If I now right click on the client's managed folder, you can see I have an option to rename the managed folder path. This will present a new pop up and it will show me what will happen if I elect to continue. So the old path was under my C, Doc Store, ABC Company, PTYLTD. If I continue, this will change it to the C, Doc Store, ABC Company, LTD. So I'm going to continue with that. And if I now show you the resulting folder structure, you can now see that it's actually physically renamed my folder structure. The notes printing capabilities have been extended. It is now possible to print individual notes from the notes narration area. The print thread button will print the parent note and its children in descending time order. The print selected thread will just print the thread that I currently have selected. The grid controls in the debt area have been replaced. Credit management users will be familiar with this new style grid. There is a new status column indicating the posted statuses of clients' transactions. There is also a new visual queue indicating where clients have future receipts. If I click on the visual queue, this will then show me the details of the future receipts that this client has. The data in these grids can be grouped by the columns. So here, for example, I'm grouping them by transaction type. I can ungroup them by simply dragging it back down again. You'll also notice in the column headings there's a little filter icon. This allows me to then filter the data displayed by one of the available selections. I can change the selection simply by clicking on the filter again and choosing a different selection. If I want to remove the filter altogether, I can simply close the filter down in the bottom left hand corner here. I can also view my running totals here. However, this doesn't work in combination with the grouping. If I try to group it again now, it won't group it until such time as I unselect my running totals and I'm then able to regroup my data once more. A new button to load the data has been added to the general audit. As there can be a lot of audit data displayed here, the button has been added so that it is now a conscious decision by the user when this data is required as it has been found that if this data is automatically loaded, then the performance of the console may be impacted adversely. In the Matter console, there is a new field called Roll From Matter, which for year-based matters will display the previous year matter that this matter was rolled from. The functionality around closing matters has also been altered. When a matter's close date is entered, the fields for allowing timesheets and allowing dispersants will now be set to no automatically. A warning message will be displayed if not all of the scheduled milestones have been completed, asking if you wish to continue. As you can see, the allowed timesheets and allowed disbursement flags have now been set to no. When adding milestones to an existing matter, you will be presented with a new form. This new form is automatically grouped by milestone template. I can apply a filter here if I just wanted to see a specific template. Alternately, I can remove my filter, ungroup it by milestone template. I may then elect to sort it by milestone code, find the milestone that I require adding, select it over here on the right hand side and click OK. When a matter's hold date is removed, you'll now be presented with some new options to be able to recalculate your target dates. Choose the appropriate option and click OK. 
when changing or reselecting a milestone template. The milestone options have been changed. There is a new option here to replace the existing milestone with actual values re-updated where possible. As you can see here, my milestones have been replaced, however my actual hours are still populated on the preparation milestone. In the Workflow Console, we have replaced the milestone list with a new Resources page. Also, the milestone code is also now displayed in the Details area. Timesheets now has some new functionality. Firstly, mouse scrolling is now enabled. Secondly, in the Timesheet Data Entry form, there is a new Details button, which exposes a read-only view of the workflow in order to clarify the status of a matter. Also, the widths of the client, matter and milestone fields has been increased. There have also been some improvements to the fees console. When deleting fees, a confirmation prompt is now presented to the user as many fees have been accidentally deleted over time. Also, when in the fee entry, if a user selects to restart the fee, they are now also presented with a confirmation message. A new narration grid has been implemented, which can handle the new rich text formatting features available. To be able to access the text formatting tools, click on the little A button here. To be able to take full advantage of these new features, your practice will need to move to the new invoice layout format. A new narration builder has also been implemented. I can still copy my narrations directly into my fee lines using the copy to fee line button. Alternately I can copy it to the clipboard Then I might like to do some further formatting of it down here. I might like to make a bit of something a bit bold and then this one also has its own copy to fee line icon. The Narration Builder also gives us the ability to be able to edit posted timesheet and disbursement narrations. Only the posted whip entries narration is edited, with the original timesheet or disbursement narration remaining intact, as this is a part of the order trail of original data. For example, if I wanted to edit the Commence Work timesheet narration, I can right click on it, select Edit Narration, and I might want to change it to Commence oh, Audit Work, and go OK. I can then copy that to my clipboard and include that as part of my narration. Copy to the fee line and there it is. Auto fees has a couple of new options. The first is for the invoice date to be the date of posting and the second is to use the matter standard fee narrative as the fee narration. If we have a quick look in the matter console, we have a look at a matter details you'll see that you can set a standard fee narration to be associated with a specific matter. When you're using an auto fee, it'll then use that standard fee narration in the preparation of the auto fee. The WIP listing reporting tool now has the rate level fields added so that the usage of these rates can easily be reported upon. The WIP move function has been enhanced. There is now a new form which makes this function more of a wizard style approach. The ability to be, able to be able to move WIP between milestones has also been included. You'll notice at the bottom of the form, it shows a sentence, which seems to make a bit more sense about what's going to happen. So it's going to move the selected WIP for the ABC Company Propriety Limited. It's going to be moved to A Person and Family Trust, 2013 Annual Compliance Matter, to the Requested Information Milestone. For practice administrators, Flexibility for the period end at check number 6 has been added. There is a new subsetting to be able to remove this step altogether if required. In the integrity check, a warning message which explains the consequences of choosing to delete $0 transactions is now also included. When the period end process is completed, the system will now also automatically add an audit point for the Audit Management Console. This removes the requirement for the administrator to remember to perform this task 
as well as providing a logical grouping for this audit data. In the standard matter console, fields for assigning default values for allowing timesheets and allowing disbursements have been added, as well as a date closed field so that specific standard matters can no longer be selected for use. In the expense approvals application, the approvers now have the ability to be able to alter the expense type before approving it. The Process Engine console now has a termination date field available so that you can now terminate processes that you no longer want to be available within the fees application. Within Joe Administration, the Citrix usage area has been removed. All applications that users have rights to will now always be displayed regardless of the working environment. There is no longer any need to double click on the Show All Applications link. This will make the usage of the application much friendlier for users who regularly switch between different environments in order to use the software. In the Partner, Manager and Department consoles, a new termination date field has been included. Terminated records will no longer be available for selection in lists. The general matter rollover function has also been extended to include the allow timesheets and allow disbursement flags so that these can be altered at the time of performing the general matter rollover. That completes the video presentation for today. In summary, I'd like to thank you all for attending this video presentation and to remind you all to review the Practice Management version 10 release notes for more information on the new features, corrections and enhancements, as well as using the online help for further information. Finally, we are here to help, so let us know if your team requires additional training on any of the functions within Practice Management to maximise these changes to best fit your business processes. Once again, from the Reckon team, I wish to thank you for your viewing this video presentation. We hope that the new features and enhancements in Practice Management version 10 will be a benefit to you and your practice.